What is up everybody? This is a video I've been trying to do for like four years now and I just never got the time to do it for some reason because I dropped like 20 videos a day and you would think I would have done this by now. But today we're going to be taking a look at the iPhone 8 and comparing it to the Samsung Galaxy S8 and seeing which one you should buy in 2018. Now these phones actually just came out last year. They did come out a couple months away from each other. The iPhone 8 came out in September of 2017. The Galaxy S8 came out in March of 2017. But these phones believe Believe it or not, in my opinion, do have a lot in common, but at the same time, they have a lot of differences as well. And I can see why someone would click on this video just because you want to hear my beautiful voice and all that stuff. But starting off, the iPhone 8 is a bit smaller than the Galaxy S8, but at the same time, the Galaxy S8 really doesn't have too much bezel going around it either. So, in my opinion, of course, the iPhone 8 is overall smaller, but I don't think the differences is as big as it might seem like in photos and everything. We have a 4.7 inch IPS panel clocked at 750p on the iPhone 8 and a 5.8 inch Super AMOLED screen clocked at 1440p on the Samsung Galaxy S8. And I can tell you right now the Samsung Galaxy S8 screen is literally the greatest thing ever. I take that back. It's not the greatest thing ever, but that screen is super awesome. Much better than the iPhone 8. And I would probably argue that it's better than the iPhone 10 screen as well, but that's up to, you know, discussion and all that, but Samsung does source these panels as well, so it's really like kind of crazy there. Now the iPhone 8 does have glass on the back and so does the Samsung Galaxy S8, but in my opinion, I do think the Galaxy S8 does feel way more premium just because it does have the edge panel kind of sliding off the sides of the screen and it also just has a bigger screen and there's very little bezel on it. The Galaxy S8 looks far more premium than the iPhone 8 does, which is kind of sad because I do like iPhones, but I gotta spit the truth and that's honestly what it is. Now this next section, I have to preface by saying iOS and Android are completely different operating systems, so the specs on the iPhone 8, if, even if they're higher or lower or whatever, doesn't necessarily mean it's faster or slower than the Galaxy S8. All you can really tell is just real world performance, whether you're using it day to day and whatever the case is. Now, I'm just going to run through the specs, the iPhone 8, and before I even delve deep into the specs, I do want to say the iPhone 8 right now has iOS 11. It's going to be getting iOS 12. It's going to be getting way more versions of iOS and overall way more versions of OS than the Galaxy S8 will which is kind of sad. The Galaxy S8 started off getting Android 7.0. You can get Android 8.0 on it. We'll probably be able to get Android 9.0 on it, and I don't think it's going to get Android 10 or any other version after that. But the Galaxy S8 is rootable, and you can throw a custom ROM on it. So if that is something you choose, then you can go down that rabbit hole and figure that out yourself. But if we're keeping everything stocked, the iPhone 8 does have the advantage here in terms of software updates. Now, in terms of the specs, this is where I just kind of went on a rant and told you exactly what it is. The iPhone 8 has an Apple A11 Bionic chip, a hexa-core processor, and 2 gigabytes of RAM, with the Galaxy S8 does have an Exynos 8895 Octa, an octa-core processor clocked around 2.3 gigahertz, and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, in overall usage, I do kind of see that the Galaxy S8 is a little bit faster, maybe, than the iPhone 8. But at the same time, the iPhone 8 kind of is a little bit faster in some cases too. I will say that in terms of gaming, the iPhone 8 does kind of have an advantage just because the iPhone 8 is one of the fastest iPhones out there and the games on iOS are more tailored for those phones. With the Galaxy S8, there are immense amount of Android phones out there that even have like 8 gigabytes of RAM now. So, that, so those game developers have to make those games for those phones that are even higher spec than this one is. So, But I would say the overall performance, including gaming, is better on the iPhone 8. But on the Galaxy S8, it's not that bad either. If I had to break it down like I always do, if the iPhone 8 is 100%, the Galaxy S8 is probably like a 90 to 95%. That's why it's really hard to see which one is faster. But when you include something like gaming, which is also heavy performance based, you kind of have to throw that in as well. Now, in terms of the cameras, these are kind of hard to do, but I'm just going to run into it. The Galaxy S8 has a 12 megapixel camera. So does the iPhone 8. Now, I want to say that I'm not the best photographer. I'm honestly just an average person. And I'm just a one person. I didn't take anybody else's opinion on this. I'm going to say that really both these cameras are good. I can't, I honestly cannot tell which one is better. In some cases, one is better than the other. In another case, the another one is better. I just can't tell you what I should look for when I'm taking a photo on these things. Sometimes it's a little bit more obvious, like when I'm looking at like an iPhone 7 Plus or an iPhone 10, when I'm comparing both those photos, I can kind of tell a difference. The iPhone 7 Plus does kind of lower the brightness, but I've owned those phones for so long. The 7 Plus was my daily driver. I can tell you how, how well of a photo it can take. And when I compare something to it, I can see which one is better. But with the Galaxy S8 and iPhone 8, I honestly cannot tell you which one is better. In some cases, I do think the Galaxy S8 is better on darkening the image. 
but again that might just be the screen i feel like the colors do pop out a little bit more on the photos but on the iphone 8 i do think that overall video quality is better so there is kind of a trade-off and you are able to shoot 4k at 60 frames per second on the iphone 8 with the galaxy s8 you are not able to you are also able to shoot 1080p at 240 frames per second where you're only able to shoot 240 frames per second on 720p on the galaxy s8 so there is a little bit of differences just in terms of video qualities but if it's between the two, I would say they're both pretty even. And this is why it's so hard, guys. Like, I honestly cannot tell you which one is better. So I'll just say in this case, it is a tie. But just know that I am a novice when it comes to these things. So you might need to look at a different video explaining. I might actually have a video of a camera comparison between these. I've made so many videos, I don't remember. But check back on my channel. I might have made a video. If not, then you can Google search it. But in terms of the front cameras, the iPhone 8 has a 7 megapixel camera. The Galaxy S8 has an 8 megapixel camera. So take that as you will. That has been my thorough camera test. It hasn't really been that thorough, but really both these camera sets on these phones are very, very good. Now switching on to a non-polarizing topic, the battery life is a pretty interesting one because both of these do not have removable batteries, which really sucks, you know, shame on both these phones. The iPhone 8 has a 1,821 milliamp hour battery. The Galaxy S8 has a 3,000 milliamp hour battery. And really, I this is another one of those things, like these phones haven't deteriorated in battery life. So now I'll tell you like this, and this is pretty shocking because if I was looking at those numbers, I would probably just assume that the iPhone 8 has better battery life because it's smaller, has less screen to power and all that stuff. But in fact, I do think the Galaxy S8 does have the advantage here. And it's not really by much. It's not like a twice as much. Like if you look at these specs, 1821 versus 3000, you would assume it's like twice as good battery life. That's not really the case. It's it's pretty good. You do get maybe like 20 percentage plus more out of the Galaxy S8 than the iPhone 8. But I find it really weird that Samsung was able to do something like that because the phone is much bigger than the iPhone 8, has a much bigger screen, a much better screen, and on paper it's spec higher, so it's pretty interesting how they were able to do something like that. And I think that's one cool thing that Samsung is able to do. Now, if they were just able to bring removable batteries back, I would literally throw a party. I would invite everybody. All you guys would be invited and all that stuff. So Samsung, if you want to throw a party, I'll throw the party. I'll, 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 I will order the pizza, the food, everything. We'll have it in like New York or something. Samsung, if you, if you just bring back the removable battery, I will literally like throw a party out there. I'm not even joking. Now, those have been some of the major tasks and major talking points, but there are a lot of minor notable things that I have to note, and I'm just not going to have to go through it. Now, technically, both of them do have Force Touch in some capabilities. The iPhone 8 has a little bit more of Force Touch enabled because the whole screen is pretty much a Force Touchable thing, and I use Force Touch all the time on my iPhone 10. It's something that I kind of just use on the keyboard, trying to get more information on the apps when I have to turn off Wi-Fi, all that stuff. I do think iOS does have the advantage here, but the Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S8 does have a kind of virtual home button kind of thing, which is kind of important, but at the same time, I don't really see the advantage of it. It's just kind of poorly used. There's no fingerprint sensor on the screen, so it's kind of random. Both these phones do have fingerprint sensors, but the Galaxy S8's fingerprint sensor is up top by the camera, which is very, very awkward placing versus the iPhone 8's fingerprint sensor, which is on the front, which is super awesome. I love that about it. And I really do think if it's between the two, I do prefer Touch ID over the Android counterpart of fingerprint sensors. I do think they've developed over the time, but I'm, I just love where the placement of the iPhone's fingerprint sensor have been versus Android's. And of course, not every Android manufacturer is like that, but, but I really do appreciate what Apple did in that sense. Now, the iPhone 8 is IP67 dirt, dust, and water resistant, but the Galaxy S8 is IP68 dust and water proof. So there is a difference here. The iPhone cannot necessarily be in like a swimming pool or anything. If you get some water in it, it's not going to matter. If you just splash it in the water, you drop it in the toilet, it's all good. But the Galaxy S8, you can actually dunk it up to like 1.5 meters of water for 30 minutes and you'll still be good to go versus one meter on the iPhone 8. So really, I wish Apple just kind of pushed a little bit more water resistance in it, but it's all good. Between the screens, I love the screen on the Galaxy S8 versus the iPhone 8. The Galaxy S8 does have expandable memory or expandable storage, so you are able to put a micro SD card slot in it versus the iPhone 8 where you are not able to do it, which does kind of suck, but really I think most people are over it. And there is only one model of the Galaxy S8, which is the 64 gigabyte version versus the iPhone 8, which is two variants, 64 gigabyte and 256 gigabyte versions. And to top it all off, both these phones do have Qi wireless charging, which is very cool. The iPhone, this is the first iPhone to have 
wireless charging so that's super sick and overall this is a very you know hard kind of thing to talk about but honestly if it's between both of these phones let's say someone was going to give one or the other one of these phones to me right now for free i would honestly probably take the samsung galaxy s8 over the iphone 8 in this specific year now and that's this specific year but next year my opinion could probably change because right now this phone can is still getting updates and because of that I do think overall it is a better phone. You do have a bigger screen, you have an AMOLED screen, you have a better battery life, you have software updates still technically, but again, I can see how the iPhone 8 could appeal to a lot more people. It has more software updates, it's going to be getting you know longer support. iPhones do tend to keep their value of their resale, so you can resell this phone for a lot more than what the Galaxy S8 probably is for, and the placement of Touch ID, the fingerprint sensor, but I mean, honestly, I just love having a bigger phone, and I would probably be willing to give some software updates up right now in the future just to get this phone, so I would probably keep this phone for like two years, sell it, and probably get the next one versus the iphone 8 where i would be able to keep it longer but i think that's a risk i'm willing to take i would love to have a bigger screen and a much brighter screen and better battery life and that was not an easy video to do but really you can't go wrong with any of these phones so that's where i'm gonna leave it at i will leave links in the description for samsung galaxy s8 and an iphone 8 as well if you're willing to if you're wanting to buy it i'll leave it down there so you guys can check it out i always find the lowest prices so you guys can go and just get them through there and help support the channel at the same time so I'd really appreciate it if you guys could check it out from there. But that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions or anything like that, leave it down in the comment section below. Hit that like button, but definitely hit that subscribe button. We are still giving away an iPhone success and an iPhone SE on this channel. And in order to enter, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Both those links are down in the description, so make sure you guys enter that. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. And I hope I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, Holden. Well